Peace, 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 and welcome to Julian Jewels, a weekly vlog on the music business. I'm your host, Julian Keaton, and we have a special episode today as I have my good friend, Debbie Ann Shaw from Artist Hustle to talk about collaborations, where to find them, uh, the types of collaborations, and when you should probably do it. So I want to welcome you all. Peace, peace. I want to welcome you all to, to joining me today. Um, if you all have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Uh, today, let's try to keep our questions on collaborations if we can, uh, just so we can kind of stay on topic. But nonetheless, I'm super excited to have uh, Debbie on with me today to talk about, again, collaborations, where to find them, uh, what to what to get out of them, why you should do them. Um, just some, going over just some core reasons why collaboration is key to growing your one like your audience and then also just being a good uh steward of the arts uh as a musicians particularly because we can't do everything ourselves so um so again if you have any questions drop them in the comment section we'll be getting started shortly i'm hope everybody's have having a good week so far uh i know certain parts of the country things are opening back up so uh i'm excited to one get out and about um and uh just so we can get some fresh air again so um but today's topic again is on collaborations where to find them and the types of collabs to do uh, i think debbie just got in the live so i'm gonna go ahead and get her on so give me two seconds y'all Let's see if this works. Can you see me? I can see you. Okay. Hello. It's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a whole 365 days. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. Hey. It's definitely been a minute. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. That's Keep good. Going. <laughs> How about yourself? Doing good, doing, trying to stay away from people. You know, I'm in Maryland and they're slowly reopening like Ocean City, the beaches, they're letting people go on the boardwalk. I'm not about that life. Um, So I'm keeping my distance. Like I just, I, I'm not doing that. No, <laughs> miss me with that for right now. Like eventually I'll get back into the world, but just not right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Definitely take it. <laughs> I know we're opening up May 15th, so I'm interested to see kind of what happens. So. Mm. Are they going to bring, are they going to let the kids go back to school or? I doubt it. I know they pretty much shut the schools down till at least the fall for sure. Mm. Um, but I like, I don't even know if the college students are going to be coming back in the fall. So we'll see. Oh, okay. So, but for the folks that are joining in and don't know who you are, you want to give folks a background about who you are, what you do, and what Artist Hustle is? Yeah, I'm um, so, my name is Debbie, and um, I run Artist Hustle, and it's it's pretty much an educational platform here on Instagram, but we do have our website, artisthustle.com. It started with um, me having friends in the industry uh, because I do marketing and and um, other social media and stuff like that for corporate. But I had a lot of friends that were in the artist community and they were like, I want to learn how to market myself like Apple does in State Farm. And, you know, how do I do this? And I just started sharing information and I was a music manager at one point. But now um, I'm managing Artist Hustle to turning into an online community where you guys can have everything that you guys need to learn, um, whether it's marketing, legal, whatever. Um, so I'm excited to be here with Julian. We've done an interview last year, was really good. I did a highlight of that. That's one of my favorite interviews. So um, I'm originally from Maryland, the DMV area, and I've been doing digital marketing and um, all of this good stuff for the last 10 years. And I'm just excited to share and talk about collaborations, which we're doing right now. So I, I'm I'm geeked. Like I've been watching the little uh what is it? The uh the verse battles. Like the only one I saw was the one with Babyface when it shut down the internet. I saw that one. Yeah. I did see that one. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't had the chance to see any of them. I've been working hard on my platform. So I'm uh -huh. gonna have to level. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's I let's that. dive before I dive deep into the questions. If you all have questions that are tuning in, feel free to drop it in the comment section. Um, we have a, a Q and A section at the end of our conversation to kind of dive deep into it. Um, Debbie, let's kind of start off with the definition of collaborations. Everybody's like definition is a little different. So I'm interested to hear what your definition of collaboration is. Honestly, in just simple terms, it's working with someone to create or accomplish something that could be a goal, a task, whatever it is. It's just working with someone or some business or something to accomplish something, to create something, to produce something. And that's it. Like, that's the core of it. But obviously, it goes a little bit deeper. And that's what we're going to talk about. But that's like my simple definition of what a collaboration is. That's all. Yeah, that's I, I, I could yeah. definitely agree to that to a T. Um, why do you think collaboration is key for not just artists, but other artists, but why, why should artists and, and music professionals consider collaborating with other folks? Yeah, one of the biggest things um, is problem solving. So I love like getting on lives and doing different things like that to problem solve, to talk about what's going on, to talk about the issues that you have going on in your industry or maybe what you're going through. Collaboration is a great way to do it. The other reason why I love it is because you get educated. The educational aspect of collaboration is so dope. Hey, Danny. <laughs> um, so it's so dope. And I learn every single time I collaborate with somebody that you always walk away with something you maybe not have known or someone that you didn't know. The other reason why I love it because you build connection and community in your industry or just in life. So I absolutely love collaborating. I try to do it as much as possible. I know I was on a hiatus, but I am back. And, you know, I'm so glad that we're able to, like, do this um, together. And um, I'm excited. But, yeah, problem solve, connections, and educational. I think those are the main things that I absolutely love about collaborations. Love it. Yeah. I, think, I think you hit it on the head when it comes to, like, community. I think we tend to forget that we as humans want to be a part uh, and work on things with people and like we could do things ourselves individually but mm -hmm. we can go what's what's the proverb we can go further when we're working together than our sister what is it going but go further when we're together we're trying to get somewhere quick we could do it by ourselves is it, isn't it like that i think is what it, the proverb is if you want to if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go with others so i know what you're talking about but that's yeah that's the quote yeah you're right it's it's true it's definitely true mm -hmm. well, yeah what are some types, because you, you talked a little bit earlier about a few different types. So you mentioned verses. We talked about how this is a collaboration. Um, for artists or music professional, what are some types of collaboration should folks consider? Like, I was thinking about cross-promotion. Um, you know, if you have, and Joyce made a good point, teamwork makes the dream work. And that's very true. Like, you, the thing is, everything that we want to do in life, it takes a team to do it. At the end of the day, like you, especially if you're trying to do something bigger than yourself. But going back to what you were saying, um, like cross promotions, that's a good one. Like if you have a product and you know someone else has a product and it complements each other, but it's targeting the same type of people, you definitely, I mean, a collaboration is like a duh, like that's what you do. Also, conferences are kind of a collaboration. I think that's a great collaboration is when you go to conferences, whether virtual, in person, whenever. Also, interviews, kind of like what we're doing now, or like Q&As when you do that. Also, like influencers. So if you wanted to partner up with a painter or um, just someone else in the community that already has an audience that maybe you want to tap into or that can cross-promote between the audiences, that's something you can do too. But also community. I think if a lot of people right now are talking about donations because of COVID-19 and coronavirus, um, that's always a good way to give back too. So um, it just depends on what you're trying to do. Like, what exactly are you trying to do? And that will kind of guide you into the collaboration that may be best for you and the person. Because I feel like collaboration should be a win-win. It should, you know, it should work for you. Like you, Julian, like what you do and what I do, we're in the same space, but we're not even competing with each other. We're reaching the same type of people. So why not come together? Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's, uh, you brought up a lot of good points. One of the ones that I think you, uh, that we could kind of touch on for another second is like how often, as an example, like merchandise, as an example, like I don't mm -hmm. see too many people uh, that, at least from an independent standpoint, that mm -hmm. will work with a designer 
um, or even a graphic designer to come up with really cool merch ideas. And then instead of it just being always oh, just merch from the from this musician, it's a cross collaboration or a partnership with this person and this visual artist. Um, I think that's like I don't see enough of that, honestly. And I think folks could benefit on both sides further if they okay. considered it that way. Um, I think that's one that, that often gets overlooked. I think another that often is overlooked um, for musicians is like partnering with small businesses. Like now it's honestly like kind of once the dust settles, I think that honestly will be a really good move and a good look to partner with, with a small business that has the same mission, the same values, the same purpose as you and mm. see how you can can collaborate. There's a current um, campaign here in St. Louis by this artist named Sir Eddie C. And uh, a good chunk of like what he talks about is mental health. And so he just partnered up with, um, I forget the name of the organization, but it's a nonprofit to where they're doing like this GoFundMe or this fundraiser where they're going to finance or fund two therapy sessions for black males. Um, and it hits on both like his point of focus on mental health awareness and in that organization's like whole focus being on um, therapy and providing that mental wellness for a segment of people that don't get access to that all the time. So yeah. I think those are some things or some ways that, that you should probably as artists and as professionals how we should probably start to navigate, like, as you put, what are the goals? What are the objectives? Uh, does those things align with who we are as people? Um, and then, like, what we want for our fans. Mm -hmm. So if you all have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comments section. Um, we want to make sure that we get to it and answer any questions uh, throughout the day or the, throughout the interview. Um, when should someone collaborate? Like, I think that's also, like, a really big point is, like, Folks don't know when to collaborate. Have you have you seen any success on like when is a good time to approach one? I think all like it goes back to what I was saying before. Is it beneficial to both parties? I don't want anybody contacting me or I don't think anybody wants to contact them and all they are saying is gimme, gimme, gimme. With collaborations, it has to be you when to do it is when you have something of value. If you have something valuable to talk about or something valuable that you can bring to the table, maybe something that they've already been doing and you can add to it, I feel like that's a great time um, when it's beneficial to you and the other person. That's always a good time. Also, it can also be a promotional and marketing strategy. So if you are launching a product or you're thinking of how can I be different right now, like how can I you know, think outside of the box, think of ways, how can I reach out to the unorthodox way of getting myself out there. I think about um, Diddy did this one time with Biggie. So um, Notorious B.I.G., he, when they were doing his mixtapes and, um, you know, street promotions, we didn't have social media. So what they did was, I remember there was a video where they had Big, Ma Big Macs from McDonald's and they would put his CDs in there. And I was like, yo, that, I mean, they have a they have a thing. They know people like Big Macs. He's big. So it's just like, okay, this is beneficial. This is a marketing strategy. Let's partner up. But not really. I don't think they actually didn't partner up with McDonald's at all. But at the same time, it still was a great marketing and promotional strategy for both. You know what I mean? Because that still gives McDonald's recognition that they didn't pay for. It's kind of like that Popeye's chicken. They didn't pay for all that advertising, but people did it anyway. It wasn't a collaboration, but it's just that idea of being creative in your promotion and getting yourself out there. So I think that's a good time to collaborate when you have something offer that's worth talking about, that's worth someone's time and it's beneficial to both parties and you can market and promote yourself and the other person too. So, yeah. I was, uh, are you up to Trapital with Dan Runcy? No. So there's this guy uh, named Dan who runs Trapital Shout out to them because they do like amazing work. What they do is uh, essentially it's a, a paid newsletter. Mm -hmm. and newsletter, they write in-depth articles or newsletters about various things that's happening in the industry. So um, one of the articles that I came across, I think last night, uh, was how Jay-Z and Dame, how that kind of still impacts hip hop today. And one of the points that he made uh, that I thought was really super profound and relevant is how Jay-Z moves and how he kind of moves like 
an equity, a private equity firm that's looking for other companies uh, to partner with to gain traction. So like, if you notice how he moves, he'll, he'll partner with a, uh, a Samsung or a Reebok. Um, and then there's this like exchange of value, not necessarily always for him, but for both to where Reebok or Samsung is trying to tap in into his audience and Jay-Z might be trying to tap in to further his reach or further uh, his influence or put his influence uh, in a space that normally isn't always there. So those are some super unique partnerships um, that I think people like don't tend to realize are partnerships to us or collaboration to a certain extent. Um, mm -hmm. Have there been any collaborations you've seen during the quarantine or the stay at home orders that you thought were just super dope? Um, I do. I do. I was going to add to that, that question that you asked before, when you should do and with who. I would say this. Um, and Joyce made a great point about Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova and Cardi B came together during COVID-19 and they gave out $1,000. I think they're still giving out $1,000 per hour for the victims. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, right now, obviously, we're in a crisis so that, you know, a lot of people are teaming up. A lot of people are. You know what I mean? But this is not, you don't just collaborate when it's crisis. It's at any point in time that you feel like it's valuable to not just yourself, but to the community. Um, but you can network with people within your own industry um, that reach the same type of people. Kind of like what Julian was talking about with Jay-Z and how Cardi's done it with um, Fashion Nova, Diddy with um, Ciroc. There's so many dope examples of people doing um, great collaborations. Uh, I also really loved, and I talked about this when we first got on, uh, the verse beat, the verse battles. The verse battles have been the one of the biggest things outside of uh, Tory Lanez which I didn't know about um, until one of my friends put me on about his quarantine radio. But it's like, y'all, use what's going on in pop culture or just worldwide and tap into what you can do creatively. Because that, like, was one of the biggest things outside of, like, the verse battles with Timbaland and all the, you know, that was great. But, like, Tory Lanez, like, killed it. Like, nobody saw that coming. He literally started, I think he gained, like, 70 million um, new new people like it was so amazing I think that was one of my favorites now it got a little ratchet it was crazy but that was his brand so it's like be true to your brand like people were acting a fool like I saw the girl twerking with milk on her butt I was just like I'm done it was entertaining but it was like <laughs> it worked that was what people wanted to see so um you know I think it's it's really cool also I've been seeing a lot of artists outside of like virtual concerts they've been doing rooftop sessions or let's say they partnered with um i forgot the name of the band that did this now that restaurants are slowly opening up in the parking lot people are partnering with um small business owners and restaurants and they're playing for tips they're playing just to entertain people and keep them in happy you know so it's different ways to do it i love the q a sessions there's been free summits financial music business there's a lot of free information that people are just coming together like look this is time for us to share our knowledge and to just give it out like i've been consuming so much content and um i've been, I've been really excited so there's a lot of examples i can't go through it but i'm not gonna lie my two favorite has been quarantine radio um and uh the the uh verse battles the verse uh battles with teddy riley and um Babyface. That's been my favorite. I'm not going to lie. I actually really enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> no, those, those are some really good examples. Um, I think another one that we could probably talk, or I'll just mention real quick, is uh, Travis Scott and Fortnite. Like, mm. that was such a smart move for Travis because he knows his fan base so well to where he knows that they practically live over there on Fortnite. Um, yes. Even Drake with what isn't it Twitch? I think that is. Yes. Uh, Esports like, yes. like whatever your interests are. Yes. Figure out a way to like tap in and just see what value beyond just your cultural relevancy can bring to the table. And if that's what that is, and awesome. But like it's so like as you put, it's so many examples of just people going beyond just music uh, of collaborations and how to bring the most value out of it. Um, if y'all have any questions, make sure that y'all hop in the comment section and 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 get to it because we we have some time to talk about it. Um, 
trying to think what else what else could we really like dive into before the questions start coming through um Hmm. I, I um go for it hmm? go for it oh um I was just gonna say like I think this is a great time and I've talked about this on uh, my channel before we had a live Q&A about quarantine and COVID-19 resources I think this is a great time for y'all to be sliding in these DMs and I'm not just talking about to pick up women or pick up men I mean hey if that's what y'all trying to do that's cool but I do think this is a perfect time to be networking. Collaborations are great, but they're they're also great to network. So I feel like if you have been the type that been like really like just an observer and you know what I mean? I think this is the time, like even Danny, he's on here now. He slid in my DM and he was like, hey, I ain't got some great information. And little did he know I was gonna be talking about this topic anyway. So we had a great three hour conversation that was great. Um, about COVID-19. So it's like, reach out to these people, maybe people that um, within your own social following or whatever, but like, don't be afraid to message and email. Please don't spam y'all, please. I mean, I understand everybody's home, but like, please come up with a good like, you know, collaboration idea that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Please do not just like, oh, I just want to work with you. Like, let's work. That's, I mean, I get DMs like that all the time. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. So yeah. I just feel like this is a great time to step out and message those people, follow up with people that you've met in person, maybe last year or at other conferences and stuff like that. This is the time to do that. And, you know, think of ways, how do I get myself out there and connect with other people and do stuff different? Maybe I can also collaborate with my fans. Let me bring them on Q&A. Let me bring them on and you know what I mean? So um, behind the scenes content and stuff like that, just it's time to just be creative. They, there's no limit to what you can do right now. Yeah. No, I, all of that's awesome. Um, I think I, I'll touch on something real quick that might, I guess, help us get somewhere. One of the things that I have been doing the last, I don't know how long, maybe at least two years, is that I've been, uh, funny enough, that Dreamville got to it and was able to get it out before me. Um, I've been doing this, like, compilation album, putting together this compilation album where we would rent out a studio, uh, like three or four room studio, um, and just invite a bunch of musicians to come through and just to collaborate themselves mm -hmm. and, and work on songs. And so uh, I remember the last jam session that we had, we had probably like 35 musicians uh, come together and make some incredible music. And, uh, you know, the, the goal for it, honestly, it wasn't even to like make great music at that moment. Um, like it is, of course. But like the goal was to like get people to come together meet new people to ultimately have those collaborations in the future to where they could then leverage uh, each other to go further, go farther, make really dope music, come up with really unique uh, marketing concepts. Because I think that's kind of the other thing that, that we tend to forget. There was a guy that was in here earlier, shout out to Tom, who um, I had sat down with him earlier today. Uh, and he talked, he told me how like, how he'd be in the studio and he'd be like, working on something as an engineer and he uh, the the folks that are in the session that ask him for uh for like something and he add on to it and then that's like that within itself is a collaboration right so like i, I think we tend to overthink what these collaborations could be uh just like at, 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 its, at its minimum like as you mentioned like what do i have a value that somebody would appreciate and could help that pl their platform or their knowledge base and vice versa and that's one of the things that i find like the most value in for others and as well as for myself so so danny has a question um tips on researching potential collaborators before reaching out that's an awesome question do you want to start or do you, you want me to go um I, what I'll say is, um, when you're thinking about collaboration, um, before you reach out to somebody, the number one thing, it goes back to what we talked about before. Why do you want to do it? So Danny, let's, let's dive a little deeper. Give me an example of what you may be working on where you would want to collaborate with someone. Um, so then we can kind of dive a little bit deeper. I don't, 
because I could give out generic things, but I really like when people like give specific, like, let's say, I know you're working on music or whatever. Maybe you're trying to, um, whatever it is, just, can you give an example, even if it's not specific to you, but just a little bit deeper? Um, Jillian, do you have any just generic answers or tips for that? Sure. Um, I think one of the things is, as you mentioned, know kind of what your goals are. So mm -hmm. if you don't, knowing your goals uh, gives you a framework to, to work on, to know like maybe, maybe I want to work with uh this particular producer because he has a certain style that i've been wanting to tap into for a while or i might want to uh collaborate with this visual artist because the way that he captures a certain image helps me get my vision out uh, to help me better explain the story that i have so those are some i some some i guess like some starting points and they'll kind of like once you know what that is then it's just as you mentioned earlier approaching it like hey i have this really unique idea i think you do an amazing job tapping in with this certain style or this certain perspective i think it's a perfect fit or a good fit for us to just have an extended conversation to to come together and collaborate on something uh that's really what it boils down to is is like using instagram using linkedin to discover people with skills with uh the knowledge and then just kind of further digging to see like what did they, what do they do and what value you both possess um, and seeing how it could work for you. When, when you do decide to reach out, uh, you'll start to realize that there, that there is some type of uh, friction or chemistry. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he, well, I can't really see the comment. Hold on. I think he's <laughs> with an artist of a different medium. Oh, amazing. okay. So, so Danny, maybe you mean like if you're into music and you want to reach out to a painter or if you're into music and you want to reach out to a chef or like, you know, some other type of creative person. Um, I agree with everything Julian said before about the importance of, um, you know, tapping into social media and stuff like that. I think if you, let me just do... Because that's still kind of like, okay. I'm just going to say, okay, let's say you're a musician and you want to reach out to a um, graffiti graffiti uh, mural artist. You know what I mean? Somebody that does like dope street art. Like they just know how to do dope canvases or whatever. And you have music and you're like, I want to find somebody that can bring my music or my um, my film or some, you know, whatever that is to life, but through that medium. So I think the number one step you got to take is well, what what exactly are you working on? And then once you figure out what you're working on, you need to do deep, deep, dural <laughs> like research before you even reach out. Um, I think check out their portfolio, like literally um, social media, stalk them or go on their website, um, check them out a little bit. See if they're replying to comments before you go and reach out to them. Like, see if they're kind of active. When was the last time they even posted? Uh, you know, check out their website. Kind of do some digging of yourself and say, like, could I, let me see what they've done recently. Let's say they've just posted, um, I don't know, something about quarantine. And they did this, like, dope art about, you know, social distancing, but how to still stay in touch with love or I don't know, whatever. I think find something that they've done recently that you actually can connect to before you even talk about the collaboration. Because I think showing, I always tell people, treat networking like dating. Take it slow. Like you get to know someone, you don't just say, I want to marry them. Like figure out what, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't email somebody and say, hey, I have a collaboration idea. But I also like the idea of you saying, you know what? I like what you just did and starting there, just starting there, like the fact that you admire what they already are doing and, you know, um, giving some insight, you know what, I just bought your book or I just, you know, whatever it is and just starting the conversation there and then let the, com let's see if they respond. And then um, you can mention, Hey, I have this dope thing going on, but I would love to help. What do you have going on? You know what I mean? But I think starting with, learning about what they're doing, connecting it to what you have to offer, and then bounce ideas off each other. Because who's to say that you have to come up with this whole collaboration idea? I feel like you can start it 
you can have an idea, but just see if that energy is right, because not everybody that you reach out to is going to be a great collaboration. Um, so I think just admire and reach out and see what they like to do and what they've already put out there. Cause I even told someone like they reached out to me, there was a music producer that reached out to me and he noticed that I was missing music in my um, YouTube videos. So I think also when you're doing your research, find out what they're missing. Like they may be doing dope content, but they're missing music or they're missing, like they could do something a little bit more creative with the uh, release of something they've already done. So I think try to find something that they're doing, but make it better. And I think that that's always a good thing to start from. Like, how do I make them better? But also make put, put me on the map too. So um, the guy, I'll wrap up and say this. The guy came to me. He was like, how about this? For a whole month, um, I will give you my beats as long as you give me credit. But just put it at the intro and the outro of your videos on YouTube and I'll give you all my beats for a month. And that's exactly what, we, what I did. I, I credit him and we, we built a relationship right then and there. So I think... You just got to find where people are solving those problems, kind of like what we were talking about before. So I don't know, Danny, does that help? Um, but yeah, sorry. I feel like I answered that and I kind of went all the way around. <laughs> so, and I want to add on to what you said. Uh, at one point in time, you talked about how um, when, you're, when you're talking with someone and you, you might have that great idea, I think there's also should be some space to like bring up your suggestions once, once that time comes, but also be open enough to let that other person, that other collaborator to come with ideas and for you to not immediately shut it down or not have an open mind about it. Like that's part of the collaboration process too. Like knowing how to just receive it and then process it, uh, which again, it goes back to like understanding what they want to do. And then also understanding what you want to do and then finding that perfect balance to like meet right here in the middle. Um, not necessarily compromise, but where you can meet in the middle to where, all right, this is how to help me. This is how to help you. Um, what can we do together that makes the most sense? So mm -hmm. yep. that, that's a really good question, Danny. Yeah, that was a great question. Um, I, I love it because to be honest, like, I'm hesitant. I'm not going to lie. And this is me being just transparent. I'm hesitant with collaborating with just anybody, to be honest. And, you know, your brand is at stake, too. Even if y'all feel like y'all haven't built up a big enough name for yourselves, you're always you have to be careful who you connect yourself to. Um, and it, sometimes it happens where you connect with somebody and then it just doesn't go out well. Don't let that discourage you, though. Don't let the no's or people not responding back discourage you. It's a numbers game with collaborations and marketing yourself. It's a numbers game. So you have to keep pushing, even if you're not getting that response. So um, you definitely don't want to give up hope once you do start this process. Um, but yeah, some something what's for you won't pass you up. If it's if it's the right idea and the right thing, like do not feel like well i haven't got any responses and uh, like that's life like yeah we all home but that don't mean like if somebody calls me and i don't want to talk to them i'm not going to answer the phone so it's like you know but just don't don't take it personal this is business do not take it personal just keep being dope and i think also collaboration should be with the people that you want to target not also with other um brands i think definitely diving into your audience is a great idea to well, really find out before we this next question, I wanted to just add on um, to kind of touch back on like that researching aspect. Mm -hmm. So part of it is, is also asking uh, people that they've collaborated with in the past, like going back and, and just, hey, how did how did that process work for so and so? Or what do they like to look for? Or talk to people that they've worked with in the past just to get an idea of like how to best present a proposal or an idea uh, rather than coming in really cold. Um, is a good way to, to kind of know what that person or organization might like. And so we have another question that asks, besides cross-promotion, what are other types of collaborations? Yeah, so cross-promotions or what are the other types of collabs? 
So um, I was I was talking to Julian about that and we were talking about like community. So if you like have a nonprofit or some type of community um, impact that you want to make, that's definitely a type that you can do that you collaborate with them and give your talent to them in some kind of way or you give back. Um, that's a collaboration. Also, like conferences, those are huge collaborations and co-branding opportunities that people do all the time. Interviews, Q&A's. Um, you know, behind the scenes. <clears throat> also, um, what we were talking about before was like how people are doing um, virtual open mics. I think, did I talk about that? No, we didn't. Uh, oh, okay. Well, there you go. So people are doing like virtual open mics. People are doing so many different creative ideas. Also, uh, co-branding. So let's say, I don't know, let's say me and Julian, Julian comes out with a book or a course. And he's like, well, Debbie, you love to educate Artist Hustle. And, you know, Artist Hustle is all about education and, you know, um, having experiences with, you know, artists and teaching them the business. Why don't we come up with a series where we dive into um, licensing or we dive into whatever the, his book is about and we do uh, a month series giving out tips or interviewing certain people stuff like that those are different types of collaborations that you can do it's whatever you want to do you can literally like it, it's there's no limit to it there's definitely no limit to it um but definitely with those virtual performances they have um websites that you guys can go to where people can donate to you if you guys want to um i think that's a great idea and then also collaborations with co-funding so let's say you want to raise money. So remember like when they have um, like these hurricanes that hit and they have these um, artists that go and sing and then they call in and they donate the money and whatever. That's a collaboration too, you know what I mean? Co-funding and raising money. And so it just depends on what you're trying to do, but there's a, there's a lot of different opportunities. So I don't know if that answered her question, but. I think another general idea just to think is uh, bartering at, at its core, yeah. you know, is, um, what do I have that you that you may and you kind of hit on this earlier is that like about the producer um, wanting to provide beats for you like that in itself is bartering for just even getting his name out there um, in, in some instances. So definitely consider bartering what find out what people need and see what you have that will be helpful to them. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. You have to I think with great collaborations, you find what's missing in the market and find out how your two brands can come together to fulfill that. I think if you can do that in a creative way, in a dope way, in a, in a way that's never been done before, or you use what you've seen in the past and just do a quick flip on it. You guys don't have to be original about everything that you do. Literally copy, okay? It's okay to literally so see somebody do that and then you put your own spin to it. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I get inspiration all the time. So don't feel like you have to come up with something that nobody's ever done in their life. Like, no, like you can like see, right, huh? Oh, it's hip hop thing. That's like hip hop about it. Like at its core, hip hop is about being inspired, being influenced by something and adding your own flavor to it. Like we saw that with B-Boys, how they would use other, other folks style. You saw that now even more uh, with producers sampling. Um, uh, now, don't do that with, with your rhymes. You can, but just know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to suggest but, that. But, that. Uh, but no, definitely, like, as you put it, like, definitely see what, what worked and put your spin on it. That's why DJ Khaled is having number one albums for three, four years straight. So definitely just kind of see what works and just put your flavor on it. Like, uh, and it's no different than, a, like, honestly, like, tech companies. Tech companies, what they do is that they see what's happening and they either try to do something very similar and put their flavor and twist on it to say that it's, I mean, we're seeing it with Facebook. Like Facebook is going to come out with uh, with their own Zoom feature, right? So, you know, you, you kind of have to see what works for other folks and then see what you have and what that other person can bring and just do something really cool with 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 your own, with your own flavor and twist to mm -hmm. it. The other thing I would mention, going back to that first question about researching, how do I, okay, so I have this idea, but how do I find these people? Twitter search, um, you know, and typing in keywords, um, you know, and then also using hashtags 
and Instagram or um, just going to websites and diving into music industry forms or wherever the industry or the community that you're trying to get connected to, joining their little groups or joining a seminar. And then that's the way you get connected to people. You know what I mean? So I feel like there's no limit to what you can do. But one thing I always tell people, this is like my number one thing I always tell people on Artist Hustle is create a hit list of people that you want in your life in your circle in your so create that hit list and start going down that list like because i'm telling you yes not everybody's going to respond not everybody you know what i mean but if you don't sit down and create that list you're not going to do it like you're going to listen to this ig live you're going to listen to this and you're like that's great but like you have to take action you have to say you know what I am going to do something. I want to make my own quarantine radio. Now, maybe you don't call it that because I think he trademarked that. Did he trademark that name? I don't even know. I don't know. If he hasn't, he needs to get on it. He definitely should because <laughs> I was on it. No, look, I was on a financial seminar and this lady, she works in the D.C. because um, I'm like 20 minutes from the Capitol. And she was like, do you know how many copyright and trademarks are going for quarantine and I survived COVID-19 t-shirts that are about to come out? Like, I was like, y'all... <laughs> this is the time to like literally i'm not saying that you need to focus on quarantine and covid19 and coronavirus i'm not saying that but i am saying if you're creative and you want to use pop culture and you see other people or if you wanted to get with a comedian and you wanted to put your music in the background of some of his videos or a podcast or whatever like there's so many dope ways for you guys to get out there um but you just have to have the courage to do it so um but yeah yeah <laughs> i think another if you all have questions, feel free to drop on before we decide to uh, wrap up. But I think another place to consider uh, collaborations or just trying to find places to work with folks. Um, so a lot of people, as you mentioned, have been doing these like music business, virtual summits and conferences, right? Which uh, if you have not been like taking advantage of that, I won't say take advantage, but if you haven't been hopping on those, like most of them have been free. So like if you haven't been hopping on them, um like some of them like uh q a or human resources they've been like doing a like i think twice a week now where they are where they are going a zoom call with like some of the top folks in the industry and just talk for like an hour and a half um one of the things that they offer uh if you, if you, if you do like sign up is uh like a slack channel and in this slack channel there's now thousands of musicians or music professionals from folks that work at Spotify to Warner Brothers Sony to just your musician that's in the bedroom working on stuff, right? That you go in, you say, hey, this is what I do. You can find me here. And like, take advantage of like, definitely go check that person's stuff out and see what they have and see if it makes sense to just even reach out and be like, hey, I'm so-and-so. I saw that you were on the, uh, on the Zoom today, just want to introduce myself. Uh, just looked at your IG and I thought it was dope. Um, and just leave it at that. You don't even like have to really dive too much deeper into it. Um, but just as you put, start to nurture that relationship, and then people with them will open themselves and warm up to a potential co collaboration in the future when you do stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. I was thinking about Danny. Thanks again. Uh, when we were on our IG um, live, there was a jazz singer. Uh, me and Danny were like looking at her Instagram. And what I challenged everyone, and I still think this is a great challenge to do, especially with this downtime with your home, is I want everyone to, if unless you have like 100,000 followers, um, I would love for everyone in all of their social media platforms to message their followers and just say, hey, I appreciate what you're doing, like touching back into the people that already um, influence you. And I know this is kind of like it's it's collaboration, but it's also networking, but it's also tapping back into because you just never know who supports you that could collaborate with you. And I think putting it out there and sending a DM or sending an email to your email list or whatever it is that you're going to do, tweet them, whatever you want to do, and just say, hey, I'm looking to collaborate. What do y'all have going on? Do you guys have any dope skills? I'm looking for a photographer. I'm looking for, a, like, tell your fans what you're looking for. I feel like you never, a lot of people work at nine to five. A lot of people got, like, boring skills, but dope skills that you can, they can make it creative. And I think that would be a great outlet. So I think if you want to 
take this time. I think that's a great idea to really message all of your fans, if you can, or at least a portion of them, um, your biggest supporters. Like, hey, I would love to collaborate with y'all. What do y'all want to talk about? Like, what do you feel like, you know, whatever. And then just listen and see if this is a good fit. I don't know if, Julian, you, you kind of get where I'm coming with I, that. I, so. I, like, I could add on and be like, what would it look like for you to uh, just put out, like, a challenge? Like, hey, uh, who all is a dancer that's in my community or, or fan base? And who all would be interested in, like, creating a challenge that we could do on TikTok? Like, and having some user-generated content flowing. Like, you're dead on about that. Like, people want to, to, oh, yes. to like, oh, we, give, yeah. their, give their energy to something. Oh, oh yeah. And, if you decide to like use what somebody has and further like just share your minds, like that fan is going to become a super fan, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely, like you're you're very much right when it comes to opening up your your mind to having customers and your fans to provide suggestions for you. Like yes, they, they know what your fans are because they're a fan, and so they might have a really dope suggestion that might be the thing that makes you go virtual. Exactly, exactly. I'm trying to I'm, I'm listening, but I'm trying to find a post that I did. And this is an example where you guys can start networking and collaborating without even searching anything. I'm about to pull it up. There was a, a post that I used to do on Fridays on our, uh, our, our Instagram page, and it was called follow Fridays. Okay, here it is. It's still up here. All right, so this is it here. Um, can I change my, hold on, sleep. I'm still trying to learn how to use this thing. Hold on. Let me see if I can, um, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let me know if you could see this. Okay, can you see that? I can see it. Okay. Can you, uh, I can the chat if y'all can see that. Yeah, let me know if you guys can see this. This is not me um, <laughs> being <laughs> self-promotion, but no, what I want you guys to do because there's a lot of dope posts on Instagram and social media that say, hey, drop what you're doing, right? Leave a comment about what you do. And then all you do, you guys, is go into comments. So I need to go back through some of these. But these are dope people that, you know, they say what city they are, what they're doing, what they're focused on. I think try to find um, some really cool uh, Instagram posts that say, hey, come follow us or let's learn a little bit more about you. I think if you go and do some research like that, that would be good too. And just jump into those comments and, you know, reach out to these people too. So those follow, it's, I think it's like follow Fridays or something like that, like hashtag. Follow for follow. Yeah, or something like that. But yeah. yeah, I've seen it on Instagram. Like I've definitely seen it on Instagram before where people like, hey, um, let's connect. Let's, you know, drop your city or whatever, whatever. And then drop what you do or something like that. But yeah. And oh, y'all, I stole that from somebody else. Like, I saw somebody else do this, and I just said, Oh, I'm gonna do that then. So, <laughs> you do not have to be original. Like, just take what you, whatever inspires you, and put your own spin to it and make it your own. Like, you don't have to come up with all of this by yourself. So, hopefully, that helped her out. Um. <laughs> so, we're gonna wrap up here soon. We'll probably take one more question if anybody else has one. Um, so if you got a burning question, go ahead and drop it in. We'll we are answer it best we can. Um, you have any projects that you have coming up that you want to share with the audience? Um, I have some new interviews that I'm doing. So talking about collaborations, um, the focus for 2020 now is about collaboration. So I've been doing some, um, you're, you're one of the first ones we're going to like kind of start to bring back more people and um, do some interviews with. And I'm really excited about that. And then also, I want to, um, <clears throat> when I talked about you guys DMing and emailing your audience and telling them, what do you want? What are your struggles? What are you, you know, working on whatever? That's what I've been focused on this year, too. Um, so I just want to focus on putting out great content and really working on our website to make it so much better, to make it really the most resourceful place that artists can go to, to learn not just the business, but to connect and find opportunities. Because the number one thing, I sent out an email to my email list and I DM'd a few people. I couldn't get to all of y'all because it's, it's a lot of y'all. But I said, what's the number one struggle you have going on? And one of the first things, there was a lot, but one of the first things I polled the audience, this is a great thing about social media, 
is they were saying exposure, connections, and like financial, like, you know, how, how do I manage my finances or whatever? So now I can kind of take that information and say, how can I solve that? How can what Artist Hustle does, whether it's the videos, it's the interviews, it's the whatever, how do we create our main website? Because I don't care about Instagram and Facebook. I really want people on our website and signing up for our website. So how can I take the fact that a lot of artists are saying they don't have the exposure they need, they need help with their finances. Like, how do I make my money and make my money grow? And how do I make these connections? How do I build a team? Because I keep hearing that. It's like, okay, I'm doing it by myself. You know, I'll be do 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 do. So now I want to take these problems and create a solution that makes sense. So that's really the goal. So there's no actual um, like product or like an ebook or like anything like that. But I'm diving into my audience to really find out what they're working on, what they need help with, and how we can build a platform to solve that problem. Because it's needed like there's so many dope people like yourself julian you're doing an amazing job like all these interviews you've been doing you've been on top of it i went on a hiatus like i had to take some time off but you've been hustling and doing your thing so you know thank god for people like you that are just out here hustling and doing your thing and giving out education so i i just i thank you for doing what you're doing in the community and reaching out and stuff like that so i definitely want to share and hopefully you know we continue to collaborate and when you have stuff you call me and you'd be like hey debbie um i have this boot camp i'm coming out with or i have this you know what i mean so but yeah, that's that's pretty much what's been going on. <laughs> Likewise, I love I love the platform that you provided. I love how valuable uh, you go in depth. Like oftentimes when I see other people in our space uh, do what we do, um, they like honestly they don't go nowhere near as in depth as, as how you like just provide value. So like definitely kudos to you. And I understand if you need to take a break, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I had some other business I had to handle, but yeah, That's like, real. yeah, I, I definitely, I think one of the things I want to start teaching is some of this, like, investing in financial information that I'm learning, because I feel like it's important for artists to understand that they're more than just artists, you know what I mean? You can really turn yourself into a business, and, um, you know, so I want to start teaching that, too. Um, but yeah, so thank you. I appreciate that compliment. Thank you. <laughs> so, so I don't yeah. think we have any other questions. So I think we'll go ahead and start to wrap it up. I want to thank okay. you for making time um, to, to drop, hop on a Julian Jules episode. Um, one of the things I'm going to let the cat out the bag, I'm like going to be shifting how I have Julian Jules here in a bit where I'll be doing uh, a live, well, I'll be live streaming on YouTube. I'm about to get our whole mic set up and all of that to where I have better quality, and whatnot. And uh, let's try to do one for 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 the two one of these one of these times, and then try nice. to make it for there. Hold on, you have a YouTube channel? You have a YouTube channel right now? I do not. I'm getting it together. I mean, you can you can go to it. It's it's a blank. It's oh. blank. But okay. Um, so. One of the things then I, I guess I will plug this real quick. So last year. We did, uh, I had a program called the Legal and, uh, Legal and Accounting Program for Music Professionals. And the very first uh, session was a panel discussion with St. Louis's top entertainment lawyer, uh, this CPA that focuses on musicians and artists, and then one of St. Louis' more recognizable like talent managers. And so 90 minutes of just information that artists need to hear, like need to hear, um, I got the okay to publish it. So we're gonna be <gasps> gonna be we're gonna be publishing it sometime soon. So you all let me know when y'all wanna see it. But I definitely wanna have like a watch party on YouTube and that'll be the first video that we have. So we gotta have that on our website. We gotta talk. Oh no. yeah, we definitely gotta promote that. Like that's cause that's what I want Artist Hustle to be. It's not and, and this is the thing. A lot of people think it's about me, Debbie. It's really not. Actually, I want it to be about people like Julian that's doing dope things in the industry for y'all to come to one place to get all of these dope things from all of these experts in this field. Because there's nobody doing that right now. Like we're all kind of individual doing it like we all are dope all of us are cool but it's like we really need a place where we can gather all of that information all those dope resources all this great stuff that y'all need to conduct business not just 
have fun and entertain yourselves, but really do it right. So I'm excited because that's what I've been focused on is getting connection and collaborations with dope people that are doing great things. So, yes, I'm excited. We're, I'm excited. We're talking. We're talking. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. right. Well, thank you all for, for tuning in. If you all have any questions, feel free to DM Debbie or myself and we will uh, get to you when we can. So enjoy the weather. If it's nice out, it's gorgeous outside here in St. Louis. So I enjoy mine. I hope you all are doing the same. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you uh, next week. Uh, I had music licensing up for a topic. Um, I had a guest who was going to go on with me, unfortunately, due to some um, COVID-related uh, things. They will no longer be able to join me. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and cover what I know about music licensing and I will invite that person back on for another time. So until then, uh, I will see you next Wednesday. Uh, you all have a good one. Peace.